Hello and welcome Gladden House. We are the Appalachian Art Preservation Society. I'm Chloe Fritz, our art historian and curator. This is Michael Taberzio, our head of public relations, Yashi Hu, our financial advisor, and Rebecca Schlatter, our event coordinator. We are a nonprofit organization dedicated to the preservation and showcasing of past and present Appalachian artists and we ha currently have a traveling Appalachian art exhibition consisting of around 12 pieces of work and um, we have exhib exhibited in cities such as Lexington, Wheeling, and Knoxville. Um, we call our show The Appalachian Story and we'd like our story to continue here in Columbus, Ohio. And that's where you come in. We would be excited to partner with you in hosting a month-long event at your facility, Gladden Community House. Why Gladden? Well, as a fellow nonprofit, we feel as though Gladden's intentions align with our own. In the past, AAPS has only sought out similar community centers that seek to improve their surroundings by helping others. We prefer to actively engage with centers in the Appalachian region because we serve as an art-themed extension aiming to improve the region. Michael is currently passing out um, a little uh, booklet that shows our 12 pieces of art and gives you some further reading to look at. Uh, I'm now going to pass the mic over to um, Rebecca to talk about our community engagement. Our showcase will consist of art available for viewing during Gladden Community House's normal business hours. We will also, <coughs> we will also have three dedicated staff members that will be able to help coordinate events and will also be there to answer any questions viewers may have about Appalachian art and history. We plan to get the community involved through opportunities we will have for local artists and also through events that we will have. A large part of our exhibit is to showcase local Appalachian artists. We will have two different opportunities for the local artists. The first opportunity we'll have is we will give artists an opportunity to donate art that we will showcase in our exhibit for the month that we will be at the Gladden House. The goal is to have the art auctioned off at the end to raise money for Gladden House at our final fundraising event, which I will talk about later. In past cities, we have received an outpouring of support and generosity from the local artists who were eager and excited to help the community and for the free exposure that they will get from having their art showcased in our event. The second event we will have is a juried show. We have partnered with the George Bellows Grant Program so that the winner of the juried show will receive a $500 grant. The show will be judged by local pillars in the art community. We also plan on having events that will help bring people in to view, <coughs> to view the art. We will have three main events, which consist of an opening weekend event, a school field trip day, and a closing event and auction for Gladden Community House. We also have smaller events that consist of free art lessons and a raffle night, and all of our events will be free. The events will also be outside of our normal art exhibition as well. Our first event will be our opening weekend event. Um, at the event, our trained staff members will, will host educational booths and they will give information out about Appalachian art and history. We will also have kid-friendly events there, such as art and crafts, face painting, and more. We will also have free snacks at, um, <coughs> at the event. Our next event is a school field trip day. We have partnered with three local schools in the area Avondale Elementary School, Dana Avenue Elementary School, and Starling Middle School. It will be a half day field trip and we will have activities for the kids to educate them on Appalachian art and history while having fun. A little more about our smaller events. The three trained staff members we have will be hosting weekly art classes for all ages. We will also have Friday family nights where we'll have activities for the kids and we will have a raffle <coughs> a raffle to also raise money for Gladden House. In the past, we've had local shops and restaurants to donate goods and gift certificates to their shops to be raffled off. Our closing event and auction um, will consist of the juried event where we will announce the winner of the $500 George Bellows grant, and we will also be auctioning off the art that was donated. The proceeds from the 
auction will go directly to the Gladden Community Center and there will be food and drinks provided. Next, we will have Chloe talk about our featured artists. Thank you. So our collection currently consists of about 12 pieces of art and that includes photographs, paintings, fiber art, ceramics, and historical artifacts. And these all range from the Civil War period to the present. And all of the items are made by Appalachian artists. Um, we also feature in our exhibition um, some artists from Franklinton, which we are really excited about and we think that um, the community would be really excited about. Um, these artists are Adam Brouillette and Tom Glick. And we also have a piece, um, an additional piece from each artist that they have donated that will be um, auctioned in our event, which we also think that the community would be very excited about. Um, so now we're going to go to Yashi, and she's going to talk about our advertising. So how exactly are we going to advertise our art show? We're going to have flyers up at schools like Avondale Elementary, um, starting middle school, as well as Dana Avenue Elementary. We'll also have them in uh, churches like the Christian Vineyard, sorry, the Franklin Christian Vineyard, as well as St. John's. We will also have it in community centers obviously Gladden, um, as well as the Sullivan Recreation Center and the City Life Center. Um, we will also have um, flyers up in coffee shops as well, to name a few places. Um, we will also put an ad up on the Franklinton News, since it's a newspaper that everybody in Franklinton receives. Um, invitations will also be sent out to, blogger, to bloggers like Kelsey Sire and Jennifer Polian, who are bloggers for the Columbus Museum of Art as well as art collectors like Ron and Anne Pizzuti, who are the founders of the Pizzuti Collection. And then we will also have professors like Jennifer, um, sorry, Julie Abjanak and um, Ian Rafino, who are professors at the Columbus um, College of Art and Design. And then on the websites, Gladden House, Franklinton, and the Franklinton Arts District, they each have a tab for events. So we will also post our event on there as well. And then all three websites have some sort of social media, so we will also post that information there as well. And then to reach an even bigger range of audience, we will have Facebook ads so that people that aren't following the three websites can also see our art show. So what are the costs? Um, all costs will be taken care of by us. Um, Gladden will not have to pay for anything. All we're asking from Gladden is to use Gladden House as the location and then to also lend us volunteers. Um, and then money earned that has been donated to us will be donated to Gladden. Um, Gladden can use it however they see fit. All we're asking for is just that 50% of it um, to go towards something that will expand Appalachian art. And now over to Michael, who will talk about what AAPS is all about. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, talk about some of our goals for AAPS and uh, Gladden House. Uh, goal one for us would be to preserve. Uh, there's a, we believe at AAPS, there's a very large importance between uh, behind uh, preserving art. Uh, art is, among other things, a fundamental element of human nature. From the dawn of time, mark making and crafts have served as one of mankind's primary modes of self-expression. By seeing both older and modern pieces of artwork, we are given an insight into what it may be like to stand in someone else's shoes, to feel true empathy. For example, when you see a woven basket or a wooden tool, you are left with the realization that someone had to make someone uh, made this so that they could actually use it as a necessity. Or when you see uh, the seams painstakingly stitched uh, fibers of a handmade quilt, or finding an appreciation for a modern painter's style or techniques. Uh, we also believe it, uh, an important part of preservation is to uh, pr protect the uh, historical and cultural value of artwork. Uh, We'd like to make sure that Appalachian art remains distinct in its original form. We want to make sure it stays in a condition and where it uh, can be appreciated for when and how it is made. 
Our second goal is to uh, educate. Uh, we'd like to explore the diversity and introdu introduce people to uh, the diversity that is Appalachian artwork and history. Uh, we hope to introduce uh, kids and adults alike will be given the opportunity to see modern and classic works of Appalachian artwork. Uh, we'd also have, like to have a lasting effect on the lives, lives of our attendees. We hope um, that our attendees can take what they gain from this event and apply it to their own lives, perhaps, perhaps even give back to the community by their own means of self-expression. And then the third and final goal, uh, we'd like to nurture and inspire growth. Um, our goal is to instill empathy and have a lasting effect on our attendees. Individuals who leave this event will exit knowing or appreciating something that knew about this culture's artwork that they perhaps uh, had not previously had. Uh, also, I'd like to talk about an unfortunate truth. Um, when uh, school budget cuts are made, the arts are often uh, one of the first things to go. Uh, why? Um, you know, national legislation such as the No Child Left Behind Act and Common Core State Standards were in essence uh, the American government of way of classifying some subjects as, as not being core and the visual arts being a large one. Um, I believe that both Gladden and AAPS, we stand to gain from this endeavor. Um, a personal story of mine was uh, when I was in my senior year of high school uh, and getting ready to gra graduate after taking uh, a lot of drawing and painting courses. Um, I never thought as I was saying goodbye to the school that I'd also be saying goodbye to uh, my acrylic paintings professor. She uh, was also leaving the school. Uh, she had worked there for 13 years, but when uh, budget cuts came around, uh, my school had to let her go. And uh, I would later find out that uh, my school would go three years without having a acrylic painting class. And uh, that class had a really large effect on me. So it was sad to see an incoming class of freshmen uh, be denied uh, you know, an acrylic painting course till their graduation year. Um, so I feel like uh, this event is purely an opportunity to celebrate culture, to celebrate artwork, and perhaps have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, now I'm going to hand it off to uh, Chloe. She can answer some questions. All right, so to wrap things up, we would like you to think back on what all we've talked about today, and we'd like you to seriously consider making a commitment to working with us to hosting our event in your facility, Gladden Community House. Do we have any questions? Can I ask a question that's a question not as if I'm from Gladden Community House? Yes. So did you all visit Gladden Community House as part of this project? I mean, did you go and situate yourselves or look at space? I mean, I know this is hypothetical, so is there space there to accommodate something like this? Um, we haven't visited. We. Um, we had a, la a lady, Gail, she came and visited. Um, she's familiar with Gladden. Okay. And she actually um, suggested that we have this at Gladden. Because um, we, we had been thinking about doing it at the Columbus Museum of Art, like asking them to host an exhibition like this. And she suggested Gladden because she thought that the people of Franklinton wouldn't go to the Columbus Museum of Art. So she thought that Gladden would be a better um, venue. But so you never got into the, that, that community to see the Bellows School or Bellows Avenue or any of that sort of thing? No, we haven't. Yeah. So other than that they're all from Appalachia, what ties these works together? What, you've got a dozen things here that they're very different. You've got really contemporary stuff, got some artifacts, some handicrafts, some photographs. Why, is there some linking theme between the, um, among all these works of art? I think, I think you just said it just that they are um, from Appalachian artists because I think um, part of our thing is that we want people to learn that just because you're from Appalachia doesn't mean you have to make one thing or fit in one box. Um, so I think that's really important um, because you can make some really contemporary stuff and you, know, you don't have to be from Appalachia. You don't have to like, you know, weave baskets or um, 
I fit in one box, I think. So I think it's good to show people that, you know, you can do this and not be, um, you don't have to be a stereotype, I guess. I just, I had a question about the pieces you picked, because it's interesting. I mean, I think that on the one hand, they show the beauty of Appalachia to Appalachians and others, and also uh, engage with some of the um, ideas or problems that are inherent with the region, and I wondered if you're thinking about that. Yeah, I think, I think that is a thing to, um, like I just said, I mean, it's nice to show the breadth, but it's also important to show, I mean, what is important about Appalachia and um, in the roots and things like that. So, I mean, that's difficult, I think, with only the 12, 12 or so pieces we picked, but, but I, I think I kind of tried to do that. Yeah, there's a range. Thank you. You mentioned that you <coughs> were covering the costs, but I'm, um, as the director of Gladden House, I'm really worried about um, the value of these pieces of art and uh, do we need to buy extra insurance or? Um, we, we do have our art covered, but we, when we go to a different place, we usually work with that um, facility on like what kind of insurance they already have. So usually, usually personal property insurance covers it. Um, what they already have covers it, wi working with the insurance we already have. Um, so that, that usually covers it, but that we kind of do that on a, a basis to base, you know, as we go. Mm -hmm. There's a, and I appreciate all the work you're doing to try to get people into the show, the activities and the outreach to schools and the advertising. I think that's great. I think people don't go to art viewings, whether they're at the Columbus Museum of Art, whether they're at, at smaller locations. Do you have some estimate of what the cost is of all this all this marketing and all this outreach? I know you're relying some on some volunteer work that we at Gladden House are providing, but, but there's some dollars that, mm -hmm. that need to get spent. Do you have a sense of how much that's going to be? Um, Yashi says about six to $7,000, um, depending on how many people are expected, how many people we expect to come, okay. kind of thing. And where does your funding come from? We are, um, we've been grant funded um, we've our, our collection has kind of already been established, but we were grant funded. When would you like to have this exhibit? What, what are the dates you're thinking about? I would say in, in a year or so, that kind of thing. Um, so we would have a year to get ready and to work with you? Mm -hmm. community members to be on the organizing committee and have you thought about that like what kind of folks could help be planning this with you I guess we have are you sure. Sure. Um, we're definitely opening open to <coughs> help, help from uh, many different sources we plan on working with Gladden House to prepare these events and so any suggestions they have for people that we should include would be greatly appreciated there's a man by the name of Kevin, I can't remember his last name, but he worked at Gladden Community House in one of my SYE a few years ago. He was the most amazing, enthusiastic man, so if you could find out who he was and work with him, I can't remember the director, but there was a Kevin. He was just incredible, so I would, I would recommend that if he's still there, and I, my guess is he is, you should ask for him. Okay, thank you. Kevin, write that down. <laughs> Sorry, I can find that out for you if you really need to. Oh, thank will, you. I'll find it out for you. there are no other questions, and thank you all very much.